Neither at all. Finally you seem back into the swing of things. <laughs> and hopefully on a regular basis again, crossing her fingers for weak claim. But no, um, getting back into the swing of things, as I'd say, we're going to have a look at something a bit um, lower tier in this case. The Type 64 A26 Premium Light Tank. Now, many of you may know this from Stronghold. It's rather popular in there, and not just for its rather decent credit earning, but the fact that it's a rather good tank in its own right. Now, starting off with the garage, I wanted to go over a couple things quick without getting into too much of the faff with regards to the you know, soft stats, uh, stats up, right? Don't worry, we'll get into that later in Tanks GG, but just for reference, I'm running a rather decent crew on this, just to put things into perspective uh, on how I play it. So it may vary for you a little bit if you're running a basic crew, but obviously, BIA, that's actually not a skill I would particularly take first for a scout. I'm a numb to Camo. <laughs> Camo takes priority, and then I, you know, toss clutch braking, does need to target, another skill that's not exactly too useful, but uh, I suppose we'll go over that and takes GG as well, and six seconds because, well, let's face it, you need it. And then another thing I typically do in takes GG, but I figure we're in the garage anyway, coded optics for the equipment, if you can afford it, put it on there, medium caliber gun rammer, May as well stress the DPM, because you can take out medium tanks. Usually you don't want to do it on your own, unless they're, you know, showing blatant disregard for your presence. And then last, well, Kaminet, you could probably toss on Binox if you don't really have that decent of a crew, or you know, pretty much anything that strikes your fancy. But, all that aside, just wanted to do a brief little overview. Let's get right into that first match. Right, so, and that we got a little bit of time, I must add that I guess there's a problem with replays now as to where the over the target markers. Uh, you cannot remove people's names without it uh, mussing up everything else. I don't know if that's just on my end. Uh, I haven't found the usual mods I run for these replays on the Reddit list, because uh, most of you may have noticed 9.15.1 uh, screwed up a lot of things with the new scripts system that uses 3.0 or whatever they call it. At any rate, before we get into position, let's have a look at Strats Cage. Since I'm rather happy to build a start between this again and better still they've got it through the browser now which makes it very convenient you don't have to download a program it's just stratskitch.com go in there create free cows and do your own little thing so that's nice <laughs> now this will look a bit different from i think it's a wz1 12 for Joby did, since we're not going to be pushing hard and going over here on the 8 line. You will notice all of these fight zones on both respective sides, but larger on the south. These aren't so much the usual on no man's land or irrelevant fluff zones, it's merely if you've got command of the middle. Or better yet, if the enemy has command of the middle, you do not want to sit stationary in these zones on your respective side. So let's say, for example, we're starting from the south, which I'm seeing should have been listed as green, but bear with me for the green icons, even though we're on the red spawn from the south. We're on the south. Now, if the enemy had command of the middle, we wouldn't want to be sitting stationary. You can make use of these little defilades, but regardless of if it's early game, mid game, late game, if you can help it, do not be static in any of these white zones. The larger ones, at any rate, 
Now the ones you do need to avoid, which is still, you do not want to be here, one line. And I say this for one key reason. You see these TD barracks I've got listed? There will invariably be, if not tank destroyers, medium tanks, or some numpty in a heavy tank, sitting in either of these respective positions, and they will be able to shoot down the majority of these. But, as listed by these dashed lines, which is something I enjoy doing with mediums, especially if I'm in a platoon and we do it early, is push out right into here where you're next to the lip, usually just outside where these positions can aim. If not, you're not going to be in the open nearly as long, and you've got a much better chance of not being spotted. So, avoid this at all costs, and then late game, if you're going, let's say, north from the south and spawn, do yourself a favour, don't be caught out here. It is nearly the exact same from the north and south, don't be out here. There's no defilades, you're in the open, there's no cover to get to, do not do it. Though there is one last thing I need to add. Whatever you do, if you can help it, don't cab. I always hesitate saying that, but this map in particular, if you know the enemy team has either the western side of the map or the middle, if you cab, you will be reset, you will die, and it doesn't matter how many tanks you have allies capping, if they have even three, four tanks left, possibly even two, they will just spot you outright, unless perchance a bit too heavy, and they will reset you till the end of time. So if you're presented the option, defend your cap or failing that, get complete map control and then cap. You do not want to cap as the first resort. And anyone who says otherwise, unfortunately, hasn't been slaughtered for capping. Because it can work, just not against a half-competent team. Oh, and before I forget, lastly, this orange line in particular, on the higher side on City, avoid that if you can, or if you do push it, do it in force, take it quickly, because again, if there's tanks in the middle, this puts you in a bad position. They will be able to shoot into the majority of the time. So if you stagnate pushing on this 7-8 diagonal, it's going to be a bad time. Now that said, scouting run. Since we're in a light tank, what you want to do from your respective spawn, push out and go just behind, not aggressive enough to go past either the E line going north or the F line going south, because you will be within view range. So you do not have to push all the way out to the D line or the G line and get spotted. So just do a very quick reserved run, just enough to spot things that are cutting across either the B line or the H or J line in the city. You're safe, you most likely will not die, you may get detected, but they'll have a harder time shooting you being that reserved and spotting just what you need, and then doubling back and then potentially rinse, lather, repeat without doing it constantly because you'll get hosed. But that's enough going over the map, let's get back into the match at hand. So here we're going to do the run we mentioned, cutting back behind here, going up the middle road and just barely touching it, and we spotted that KB2. And since we did spot him, we're going to stop here and take a pop, see if we get light of again because we haven't been detected yet. There we go, copied him quick. Our bolt and were detected, so we quickly want to extricate ourselves from this position, being very careful to put the building between us and that KV-2. 
Now, they've got a comet who is in a platoon in the middle. Which means we want to wait before we push up back into the middle. As I'd mentioned, you do not want to be caught out here in any of this open area if the enemy team has the majority of the middle. Ah yes, and here's another unfortunate thing, and I have not found a chat mod yet, which is typically what I would do for my Uber players, um, to keep the numpties out of chat, or the disheartened in the case of this Panzer 3K. So if anyone knows where I can find that, please enlighten me, I'd appreciate it. Now, you saw we did another little reserved run here, keeping typical positions that tanks run, within our view range. And we lose a cable now, it's taking a quick pot shot at it. Backing off, just on the off chance we got detected, and we did not, so... We're going to take another quick reserve run, and then head back, because we've got City. Much as I hate to say it, not much point in help support the western side of the map, since there's really not all that much there. So since we've got a push going on, we need to support our allies so they don't get hosed from middle. So we're going to try and contest it by using some of these bushes. Spotting the comet. Harassing the poor bugger, making him wonder, Oh, why the heck you shot me? <laughs> since we haven't been detected, because you want to use these bushes and make certain that there's two bushes between you and the enemy, if not just backing off from the set of bushes you're in so you're not detected, so we're keeping them lit now just so our allies are aware that they're there and hopefully they can shoot them, so either harass them, keep them lit in either event and balls were detected again, so we need to bugger off now, that Panzer 3k that's been uh, rather mouthy we're going to go ahead and assist him, because to our knowledge, the majority of the tanks are middle, and I'm presuming out over on the AB line, and this should just be the Challenger and the KB1S. And these are things you have to be very conscious of in light tanks. If you notice there's an opening and you can push it, and everything else has been detected, push these. Challenger. It's fine. He's got to get damage into us, but we alleviate pressure off the Panzer 3K. We're going to double back round. Artie's focusing, and the Crombies come with us. So, we're going to mop up this side, so we can get that map control we need in order to win this map. And I hate admitting it, but thank you, Artie, for offing the Challenger. <laughs> And there goes the KB1S. So, now we're in a very good position, unlike we were just a minute ago. We've opened up the 1-2 line. We can go back into the middle using these positions without having to fret about being shot in the side. And we've even got the team pushing up. That was camping at base until, well, just now. So their comet's backing off. And typically... You want to make full advantage of people running away. I made the mistake of overextending, thinking he would just continually run away instead of stopping and shooting. <laughs> so try and be a bit more reserved than I am, folks. But I'm an umpty like that, as mentioned, so... <laughs> and now they've got the other comet running away. That's all well and good. So we're going to shore up in middle, in one of these bushes, to try and detect if there's any other tanks aside from this Sol Comet now. To further give us better map control. So, the Comet is still there. But, we're going to stick in these bushes, finding a better set, so we can come up here and hose that Comet, because we need to get this remainder of map control since it's somewhat even at the moment and I don't want to be dicking round oh balls off the shot with a Yog Panzer 4TD that's still undetected so we delight, we come up here and find a set of bushes very close that he perchance 
do not be expected. Ah, yes. And there's that York Pants of four. Now, since that Scourger died, we know he must be up here high on that probably B2 position. Which means we need to keep this building between us and those TD camping spots. All the while waiting in this bush, undetected, to try and off this comet, and he obliges us. Bye bye. <laughs> right now, guarding it away, keeping the buildings between us and the Yonk Prancer 4, where he think he is at any rate. And since we got the middle open, now, Rami the dead tank, not doing that, hopefully. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Coming up here, let's see if we can get any potsets on either the 82 or the Chromie. And we can it. So, what we're going to do, sit here, back off, and head down the 1 2 line. Because, as I said, that TD is most likely on the high side, either at uh, B2, B1. Keep it in mind again. That view range. If he's got Binex up, we need to be very careful about that. I stress that with other tanks, but more so in lights. Now we've got him detected, he did not spot us. So we're going to come up here, in one of these sets of bushes, wait for him to come by. Now he's looking at us, we're going to wait. Just a second. So he backs up behind the other side of that bush. Because we do not want to be lit, he can one-shot us. So here we go. He goes on the other side of the bush, we shoot him in the jack seat. Still get detected, unfortunately. But he was on his side and could not shoot us, which is the point and all that. Now I'm under the assumption that he's going to come over here and try and off us, so... We're going to gun it, we don't want to be hit by artillery. Wait just a second, because we know we'd be lit. See if he's following us. And he has not been detected yet. So we're going to go back in. Yes, and he's still camping behind the building. So we're going to once again push up the one, two, get behind him. As even though, yeah, we could circle him on the off chance he just clutches a shot on us. We do not want to chance that. So here we go pissing him off. He sees us. We're going to be dumb, come up here and auto him, the poor bugger. And keep him low, and if he pushes up, we could shoot him in the lower glasses, and he's gone. And all we've got to do is bop up the ass here. In this, this may not be the best match, I must admit, but it is very much why I love light tanks. It's If you know how to play a map, it's incredibly rewarding getting command of it and allowing your team to win. And off in the assy. Good stuff. Now, as per the usual, that's the end of the match. Let's have a quick look at the after battle report. And looking at the after battle, we've got what feels to be a decent amount of credit earning just about 60k. Now, that was. A rather decent damage match, probably not the best, but good damage. So for 1900, I don't feel that 60,000 credits is all that bad. Now, you notice towards the end of the match, I ran out of AP. I do admit to carrying a fair bit of APCR on this, so let's say if you're in a C9 match, which you can see, not with all that much frequency, you're ammo expenditures are probably going to be about 10 15k higher than that so you're still on a premium account going to be coming up far ahead and if it's a standard account you're still going to break even and that's with a lot of apcr bottom tier in a tier 9 match Ideally, to seven matches such as this, or two rate matches, you're really not going to need all that much APCR at all. So, for a scout tank especially, I believe this is a good credit earner as a premium. And getting further into that, having a look at the stats, 
quickly with Tanks GG since we had a rather protracted strat skit session. <laughs> but I figured it was needed for this man. We're going to be looking at its two what I feel closest counterparts. The T thirty seven it's nearly the quintessential light tank at this tier, and the T21, particularly the T21, because as far as the game's concerned, it is the exact same gun penetration damage wise. So, T6, I don't know why I said that, DPM. <laughs> I'm still getting used to doing this again, I was on hiatus too long. But yes, DPM, <laughs> 2180. Exact same as the T-37, and T-37, as we all know, very, very good T-6 scout tank. It's surprisingly a bit worse than the T-21. Now, it does have a bit less pen than the T-37, but it retains the same average damage. And better, no, or better yet, on the note of the penetration, and I wanted to show this in uh, the garage in the beginning, you have a relatively good 177 pen APCR round. If you need that and it's a 9 match, perfectly doable for side shots on hardened targets. So, yeah, the 128 pen seems a tad low for its 6 but it's more workable than you'd think. Module damage, well, you know, it's a 76, 105, nothing special. Uh, reload, saves the 37 again, slightly less than the T21. Shell velocity is, it's slower than the 37, but 800 isn't bad at all, especially when you consider that you're firing AP, and the 37 is APCR. Uh, ammo capacity, 45. That can be a problem for very long matches, but I do not think in my experience I have ever run out of ammunition. Been close on many accounts, but never out of it entirely. Now on the weapon handling, a little bit worse aim time than the 37. Slightly worse in accuracy, but still same as the T21, so it's not all that bad. Gun handling, same exact as the other two, but with the caveats of being much better on turret traverse. And if you've ever played a light tank, you're going to be firing on the move and when the turret is moving a lot. So in my view, this makes it significantly better than the 37 and the 21 in some situations. Roughly the same after firing. When damaged, elevation, 20, yeah, less T21, that's not a problem. But 10 degrees gun depression. Yes, that's only a little bit better than the 37, but as with the T21, you will notice the difference every now and again. But here is where this tank makes it nearly better than the T21 in most respects. It goes 72 kph, and it's got the horsepower per ton to get it there, no problem. So you're quicker than your counterparts, you've got the powerful weight to get you accelerated uphill at the same pace as your counterparts. You reverse quicker for some reason. I suppose that's a plus in most environments. Train resistances are... The good, but not so much better that it's going to feel too much different from the other tanks, but it's still good to have better train resistance. And then last we, we get into the irrelevant armour. Everything's below 30, whatever shoots you more often than not will pen, and most likely it will pen you with HG. But you're both quick with very good camo, I might add. So that nearly mitigates that problem altogether. But, one thing you will see, armor aside, 580 hit points. That's a fair bit less than the 37, and it's on par pretty much with the C21. That can be a hindrance. But with the better mobility, 
again, I believe that's a mitigating factor. So overall, I do believe that Type 64 is a a good, not even really a worse, it's a side grade if not better, T6 light tank out of the lot. But, as we usually do at the tail end of these videos, uh, as a summaration, I painted a bit of a picture of the tank. If you're not familiar with light tanks, do I believe this is a good starter vehicle? Yes. If you like light tanks, particularly T6 light tanks, do I think you'll enjoy this thing? By all means, and as I said at the very beginning of the video, there's a reason this thing's used in T6 Strongholds. It's a strong vehicle. There's not much to hate about it. As stated, it's got on par DPM. It is quicker than most of the respective vehicles it's going to be going up against. It has top notch gun depression. The pen on its gun, whilst it seems lackluster for a light tank since you're going to be going potentially three tiers above it is more than workable with the mobility let alone with the very good camo coefficient as we looked at and you've got on par view range so if you like or rather enjoy light tanks you should pick this up i think you'll like it if you detest them the Type 64 isn't going to sell you any more than, well, as much as a light tank should to get you to enjoy them. And if you just have an inkling of want to try out the 64 or pick it up on the cheap, I wholeheartedly believe it's worth it. Now, I know this tank's GG section was a bit quicker than normal. Um, that's because we went a bit too far in strat switch again. But as a end note, as a side, everything being a bit rushed, I believe, on this video, but getting back into the swing of things, I have created a Twitter account, which I will most likely uh, link in the description, in case anyone wants to keep track, if there's any breaks I have, uh, unwarranted breaks, I should say, and uh, I'll start posting the replays in the description as well. If anyone so inclined to just have a look at that, uh, I suppose without the odd Joe tacked on, which a bit defeats the point, but I figure I'd have it there just to provide all the same. So, without prattling on too long, as always, uh, thank you all very much for watching, and uh, look forward to catching you on the next video. So, you all do take care.